are scared to death. It wasn't a person. You are about to see real people. I knew this had to be a ghost. Reliving horrifying paranormal encounters for the first time. When buried secrets rise up to terrify the living. I was terrified. That freaked me out. That's an indication of suicide. I mean, I thought, OK, this is it. I'm going to die. I buried this for nearly 30 years. Be prepared to be afraid. Paranormal Survivor from the Graveyard. Interview with Diana Stevens, take one. Marking. The schoolhouse had been converted into a private residence when we moved in. The graveyard that's next to the house is a really old graveyard by American standards. I believe the original graves there were uh, date back to about 1750. The cemetery is still active. Uh, people are being buried there regularly. Uh, we probably have a funeral once every couple of weeks. And there's one gravestone in particular that's uh, pretty much in our front yard. When we moved into the house, Michaela was four. It was within a couple of months of moving in that Michaela started to have problems with what she called people in her room. I remember feeling people watching me when I was sleeping um, in my bed. She felt that there was a crowd around her sometimes when she went to bed, looking at her. And she kept saying that she had to pull the covers up because she felt that she didn't want to be watched. I was pretty scared because I didn't understand why people were standing around my bed looking at me. Michaela's terrifying nighttime visitors became a regular occurrence. I decided I wanted to have a tent on my bed, just something to cover my bed, just so I had something over me. Eventually, she wanted to sleep under a small table in her room. I was beginning to feel that maybe there were things in the house that I wasn't aware of, that she was seeing, and as a child, was more open to than perhaps I was. Children are often more attuned to the spiritual world because they're innocent. So they're innocent and they're more accustomed to absorption. They, they will absorb the energy rather than ignore it. Kids are more attuned to the spiritual world because they literally see everything. We tend to be born with six senses. We rely on our five. But the sixth sense is the one that, as adults, we tend to lose. Children have that from literally early on, and they can see everything, which makes them very vulnerable. One night I was in my room, in the middle of the night, thunder woke me up. I saw a man standing in the corner of the room near me. He didn't do anything. He just stared into the other part of my bedroom. And I screamed. And when I had the courage, I booked it to my grandma's room. 
I jumped up and and ran down the stairs as fast as I could, and she was already in bed with my mother. And she said there was a man in my room. And I said, you were dreaming. And she said, no, I wasn't dreaming. I saw him, I was lying under my table, and I saw him standing by my door, and he was just looking off into the other part of the room. I was terrified. Now I, my room wasn't my safe space anymore because people were watching me. There was a man in my room. I didn't want to sleep there anymore. It was really tough being a mother to see that my daughter was that frightened. The next morning, Diana asked Michaela to show her what had been scaring her so much during the night. I drew three pictures of people that I had seen. I drew one of the man that I saw when I was sleeping under the table. I knew instantly that he was a pastor of some sort, so I drew him in a robe. And then the other one that I drew was the face in the tent. The face pressing through the tent, which was frightening because the face is, it kind of has its mouth open as though to yell. The third one that I did, it's a, it's a crowd of people standing around me. It was terrifying too. The third picture was of the figures who stood around her bed. Pictures that I drew are pretty freaky looking, especially of the people in the, the room standing around me, the crowd of people. I was surprised at how specific and detailed these pictures were. That freaked me out. That scared me because then I thought, okay, we have something really serious going on now. This is when I started to get frightened because then I started to see what she was seeing and it was no longer something nebulous or that maybe had happened in her imagination. If a child has an experience and then draws what they see, because children do tend to take things at face value, these things that they draw are absolutely unembellished. They are what they see. So a child will start to color what it's seeing. And if the photo or the picture, or the drawing is getting progressively worse and darker, that tells the parent that there's a problem that needs to be addressed. As time wore on, Diana started to experience the paranormal activity for herself. One day I came home from work and I walked in the front door of my house and I, my son was home from college on break, so I knew that, uh, that he might be home. And when I walked in the front door, there was a party going on. There was music, there were people talking, there was like the sound of glasses clinking. It, it was a party. Hello? And I thought it was coming from his bedroom. Diana Stevens and her family had moved into a new home, but it didn't take long for spirits to make themselves known. After her daughter Michaela had been terrified by apparitions in her bedroom, 
Diana soon experienced the eerie disturbances for herself. So I opened his bedroom door and there was no one there. The noise shut off and there was no one in the house. I felt as though I had walked into a dream when the noises suddenly just shut off because I fully expected, totally, 100% expected, that there were people in my house, my son and his friends, that were having a good time. And instead, there was no one here. That was the first time I really took a deep breath and said, wow, we have ghosts. It scared me. It really scared me because I had never had an experience like this. The ghostly activity began to affect Diana's mom as well. My mom said I had a really horrible experience last night and she said I was lying in bed and I suddenly felt someone climb into bed next to me. She felt the sheets move. She felt the pressure on the mattress. She thought at first that one of the kids had come in and sat down on the bed. And when she turned over, she saw an old woman lying next to her. And she said, get out of my bed. And the woman was gone. She felt it was someone who had come from the graveyard and didn't yet know that she had passed on. My grandma said that they were probably just passing through and trying to find something to latch onto, and my grandma was not having that. I was concerned about my mother because she doesn't get shaken up very easily, and this, this frightened her. With all the strange occurrences in the home, Diana decided she needed professional help. When I reached out to Mark, I wanted to, first of all, have him validate what we had been seeing and experiencing. She was concerned for her family, obviously, not knowing exactly who was there. She wanted to find out why they were there and why so much activity was happening. I said to myself, wow, this is going to be some interesting case. Look at all this energy. There was a tremendous amount of energy on this property. Even though it was a very old, old cemetery, there was a lot of activity, more than usual. Historically, we found that uh, spirits who stay earthbound try to cling on to uh, what they had when they were alive. And the biggest thing, the closest thing to them is their body. So often, they will linger in cemeteries. And in this case, uh, it was uh, quite a good possibility that some of the activity, at least, could have been caused by spirits roaming from the cemetery into their home. If Diana was right, there were souls that were trapped there, we wanted to make sure that uh, they got out of there and transitioned properly to where they need to go. I sent Virginia and another investigator into the daughter's room. They started to notice these EMF spikes randomly happening. EMF stands for electromagnetic field. And when a researcher is investigating a location, um, they will have EMF detectors. And when the detector spikes, essentially, it means that something is manifesting in the area. I walked into the daughter's room, which was on the right-hand side, and as I was standing there, as clear as a bell, this reverend came in. The reverend, I felt, was watching over the grave sites, watching over his community. He felt responsible 
for all that lived in the area. So when Michaela had seen that man in the robe, she felt frightened. But in fact, what Virginia said to us was that he was simply looking around, making sure everything was OK, and he had no intention of frightening Michaela. The ghostly reverend was only the beginning. One of our investigators had actually seen what he believed was a shadow figure walk down the hallway on the first floor. When he first saw it, he was a little bit startled. He wasn't expecting to see anybody back there. Virginia really quickly picked up on a spirit of a man she believed uh, was named Henry. She felt Henry came from the cemetery. I felt his grave was outside of the graveyard. That's an indication of suicide. We had heard through people who have lived here for many years that the tombstone in our front yard was from a man who committed suicide. Diana Stevens' new home was situated next to a graveyard, which proved to be a conduit for spirits. Not long after moving in, paranormal activity began to manifest in terrifying ways. Desperate, Diana called in experts to help. They soon made a chilling discovery. The tombstone in our front yard was from a man who committed suicide. Sometimes they don't bury them with the group. So I said, is he outside somewhere? Is his gravesite outside? And they said, yes, there's one stone. You couldn't see it. I said, this man harmed himself. Virginia indicated to us that he was wandering and continuing to walk around the house to find a way to, to exit. Uh, to do something to, um, to move on. But he was afraid of moving on because he was afraid he would go to hell. He didn't want to cross over because of his teachings, because of what he was taught, that if you take your own life, you're condemned. It made me very sad to think that there was someone here who felt so trapped. Even after you pass, certain things stick with you. And this is what kept him grounded to the earth. He couldn't move forward. It was like he was in quicksand. Mark and his team had their work cut out for them in order to cleanse the spirits from the home. So when we came up with our plan uh, to resolve this haunting, uh, one of the people we wanted to focus on was the man who committed suicide. They determined that we had to cross over this one gentleman who was stuck in limbo because he committed suicide. Virginia actually set up a portal by which anyone who wanted to go and whom she had invited to go to pass over could go through this portal. A portal is exactly what it says. Portal comes from the French word porte, which means door. So what a portal is, is really a doorway to another dimension or another existence. Bringing that spirit into an energy source or the energy source, opening up a dimension whereby they can go through and be with their loved ones. Virginia had told me that Henry had a lot of uh, regrets about killing himself and was very embarrassed for doing so. And he became stuck in this area and, and didn't cross over. When we crossed this young man over who committed suicide, his family came together. He went into the light and very humble. When I was doing the clearing, the Reverend said, no. I stay here with my people, and I will watch my town and take over it. And 
oversee it and make sure everybody's fine. He was no threat. We started to do our work, and we didn't realize this, but as though there was just one. We must have cleared over 20 people, not realizing because the energy was so intense from those grave sites. So it's like me walking through a fog. Those people were still lingering around. So Virginia worked on trying to uh, release a lot of those souls that, that were stuck behind here. I think it's terrifying to know that you have a house full of people. If she could move any along and, and help them find peace, that was kind of my primary goal. After we did the crossing, the house felt very joyful. I felt like everybody from the grave sites came and, and it was like a choir in my ear, like singing and beautiful music was being played. It was just amazing. I was told that the portal would only be open for a couple of days, and then it would be closed. Anyone who wanted to go, and whom she had invited to go to pass over, could go through this portal. The next day, as I was walking down the hall, I saw a plant where she had set up this portal moving violently. The leaves were, were trembling and moving as though there was a strong gusty wind. And of course, there wasn't. It was like there were people passing through the portal. To this day, I still hear things. I hear people walking through the hallway. I hear people talking. It sounds like loud parties are going on sometimes. I like to think that the people who were trapped here have found peace. I'd like to think that they are no longer in limbo, not knowing whether they can move on to an afterlife, being afraid. So that gives me, that gives me a lot of joy and happiness knowing that they're, they're not here anymore. Paranormal entities can be forever entwined with sacred land. And if that land is ever desecrated, it may unleash pure evil, desperate for revenge. Paranormal survivor digging up demons. Interview with John Collins, take one, Mark. It was a beautiful house, uh, one story, living room, kitchen, uh, two bedrooms, a full bath, nice house. And the outside, it was a fairly big yard, plenty of room for my daughter and uh, our dogs to uh, run and play. John and his daughter Jenny loved their new home until one fateful day a year later. I was in the garage, it was late in the evening, and I noticed that the lights inside the garage started uh, flickering on and off. My first thought was uh, electrical short. We had recently put up a fence for, to keep the dogs in the yard, and I thought one of the fence posts had went into the ground and hit the wire. After checking the bulb and the electrical panel, John thought he had found the problem, a corroded underground wire. Dug up the yard, I was looking for that wire. 
And I, and I just dug in the, air, the area where I thought the wire was at. I dug approximately two to three inches before I, I hit what I thought was just a rock. Either a rock or a part of the old foundation. I worked it and worked it, and it finally came loose. And I looked down at it, and I was like, what the heck is this thing? And I seen the date of 1880 written on it. Oh my god, that's a headstone. I don't know, a small nameplate. It had Lucy written on it backwards. And that made me think, are we on a cemetery? When the former mayor of Wellsburg told us that there was a cemetery and, and back in the 1800s when Wellsburg was called Lasersville. And I think it's creepy and disrespectful because them graves should have been moved to a local cemetery, not left here. About two nights after I found the headstone, I was in my bedroom. It was probably about 2 o'clock in the morning, and I heard footsteps out in the living room, kitchen area. It was like somebody had heavy boots on. Just boom, boom, boom. The bedroom door opened. And I was waiting for somebody to come walking in, like my mother or my daughter. But instead, I saw a blue glowing ball of light. And it, it, it came in. It was really scary, because I, I didn't know what it was. There was just no explanation. It was bad. I just had this dread feeling. It scared the crap out of me. John Collins had found what he thought was a perfect home, but after moving in, he made a disturbing discovery, and it didn't take long for paranormal entities to make themselves known. I saw a blue glowing ball of light, and it, it, it came in. I, I didn't know what it was. There was just no explanation. It scared the crap out of me. And it just, it just, like that. And it just was gone. I rubbed my eyes. I was like, OK, am I seeing things? I'm like, just really tired. I tried to come up with an explanation as to what I saw. After John's chilling discovery, very strange things started to occur. I wasn't here. My mom, I believe, was like doing the laundry or in the bathroom. There was a knock at the front door. Mom went to the front door, opened it, walked out. There was nobody. She said as she came back into the house, knock, 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 back door. She thought it was me. She was like, well, maybe I, I had been at the front door, and she didn't get there in time, so I went to the back. Three knocks is supposed to be the mocking of the Trinity. Some people might hear what they refer to as the three knocks of the Trinity. Basically what it is, it's a mocking of faith, the Trinity being the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Normally when that happens, it is a manifestation of some kind of malevolent or perhaps demonic entity.
soon, even John's daughter Jenny was affected by the paranormal. When Jenny was around 10 years old, she was in my bedroom watching TV, and my mother had to get into the restroom. After my mother left, my daughter said that she saw a bald-headed old man wearing an old-fashioned suit walk along the bed. And he stopped at the foot of the bed. He turned and he looked at her and like he, had, he acknowledged she was there. Uh, she was frightened. She has asthma. And she had an asthma attack. She was shaking real bad, um, just shaking and crying real bad. And then she said she couldn't breathe. Here, try this, try this. Get up. Try it again, try it again. Well, she has an asthma inhaler, but it did no good. And that's why we had to call the ambulance. Sometimes people can experience severe physical reactions, like an asthma attack, when they see a manifestation of spirit, because it can affect their nervous system, which can, of course, make them ill, or because the atmosphere is very changed when an apparition takes place, um, that can make them ill. After the incident with the bald-headed man, my daughter claims that she heard uh, voices talking inside the house. I heard noises like uh, like bangs, uh, scratching sounds. She told me she was really scared. She told me that she didn't want to be here that morning. So I, I had to contact her, her mother, and I mean, it broke my heart that you know I had to do that. But, you know, that's what I did. You know, I, I didn't want her to go, but she couldn't stay here. You know, I, I was afraid for, you know, I was afraid what what's here could possibly hurt her. I, I felt helpless because I'm her dad. I'm, I'm supposed to protect, protect her, and how am I supposed to protect her against something that I can't see? Heartbroken over his daughter leaving, John had no idea he would soon become a victim himself. I was laying there in, in my bed. And then I saw something right in front of me. Over towards the wall, I saw something black. It was big. It, it was tall. It was probably, probably about seven feet tall. I closed my eyes and I, I covered my head up. And uh, the next thing I know, I felt somebody sit on the foot of my bed. As soon as I, I felt it set down, I was just like, oh, God, please help me. And then I felt something ice cold hands. They grabbed my ankles. And it just, it, it pulled me. I mean, I thought, okay, this is it, I'm gonna die. Ever since moving into his new home, John Collins had been experiencing paranormal activity. A ghost had nearly scared his daughter to death. And John was to find out this was only the beginning. 
as he came face to face with the paranormal evil. <laughs> I mean, I, it pulled me like halfway out of the bed. I started hollering, you know, in the name of Jesus and, you know, God help me, you know, stuff like that. I mean, I thought, okay, this is it, I'm gonna die. I put the light on, it, it let go. There was nothing there. A shaken and terrified John would soon find out the spirit had left its mark. Notice that I had scratches on me. I'm like, how did I get this on me? Uh, you know. It would, it would be on my arms, and I would have scratches on my back, and it was like a claw mark. The attacks was taking place, it was, it was draining my energy. It was making me sick, didn't want to eat, it was making me depressed, it made me isolate. I believe I was being attacked because I uh, disturbed the grave. Desecrating sacred ground can be dangerous because sacred ground has an energetic area of protection around it. So by digging it up, you're invading that space and you may anger anything that's attached to it. It had escalated to the point where I thought that my life was in danger. That's probably, I think, I think that's whenever I decided to contact Carla. You're dealing with desecrated land. Anytime you move a cemetery, you're gonna have a lot of activity bottled up on that land. The moment we arrived at John's home, my first impression was negativity. There was this negative feeling in the air. And when John first told me about his experiences, that's all signs of a hostile uh, spirit or possibly a demonic spirit. With a demonic, I'll also bring somebody of cloth, say a pastor or a priest with me. You know, I knew going into this case that we were going to be in the spiritual warfare. At the same time, I did ask the pastor how he was feeling. He did warn us, you know, just to watch ourselves. If we feel anything or any, any type of energy come around us too close, to let him know. The atmosphere did change a lot more when we were in a basement. When we got the tour of the basement, that's where the feelings really got strong. You got this weird feeling like someone was there. We started off doing an EVP session, what we normally do on investigation. EVP stands for electronic voice phenomena. And John had mentioned that he found a, like a little plate or something like that that said Lucy on it. And then all of a sudden, we started ta talking about Lucy. And as soon as we started mentioning that, we had some devices on the floor, they lit up. All of a sudden, I heard this scuffle, like someone was shuffling their feet. I look to my right, and I see this dark mass. I mean, it was darker than dark. It's like right beside me, within four or five feet, it's right there. I didn't know if it was gonna come towards me. Human-like figure 
with no facial features, no details, just a human-like figure. And, and then it shoots over past towards the pastor. You hear this loud bang. John Collins had been experiencing terrifying paranormal activity in his home. <laughs> ever since he dug up a gravestone in his backyard. With a foul spirit unleashed, John was forced to call in paranormal experts to help him rid the home of the evil presence. See this dark mass. And, and then it shoots over past towards the pastor. As soon as it hits the pastor, you hear this loud bang. The moment the entity made contact with the pastor, it like exploded. I mean, it was like the weirdest thing I've ever seen. You just saw black smoke like explode. And then it just, you heard the loud bang. And uh, I just happened to be holding a thermal imaging camera, and I went back and reviewed it. As I'm playing it back, I, I caught like one of the most amazing pieces of evidence. It was approaching the pastor. You know, you're looking at good versus evil. It, it knew that he's possibly the one that's going to get rid of him. So that's why he was going after him. And you can see this arm, it goes into him and gives him an uppercut. And that's the, at, as soon as it did that, that's when you heard that loud bang. It's almost like it was trying to fight him and it couldn't defeat him and it dissipated. Never seen nothing like that. I mean, I've done 400 cases. I've never seen anything like that before. I saw the video of the arm going through the priest, and uh, my opinion, it was trying to stop him. It was trying to stop him. Because it knew that that priest was trying to get rid of me. But once we seen that, we knew we had to take action and start doing that cleansing and blessing. All holy saints of God, intercede for us. All holy saints of God. Uh, the way the pastor blessed the house was um, he went room to room. He read from the Bible. All holy saints of God, intercede for us. You should never try to combat a demonic spirit on your own. People tend to lean on their faith, wherever that may be. Uh, bringing in a priest, for example, is probably the smart thing to do because they're trained. They have priests who are trained to deal with demonic entities. A priest believes in what he's reading. There's the power behind the words, and it empowers everybody in the room. Now, all that positive energy, along with reciting those words of power, can usually push a negative energy out of the space. And he started in the basement and worked his way up to push the entity out. Spare us, O oh Lord. A holy saints of God, graciously hear us, O Lord, be merciful. Started feeling a little bit of anxiety, and that's telling him that there's something trying to fight him. Me and my dad was at the back door, watching inside the house. I hope it'll save my family. As he approached the back door, and he was doing his blessing, whatever. A holy saints of God, intercede for us. Be merciful. I opened up the door, because they were getting ready to come out. And as I opened the door and he was doing that, the blessing went over, we, me and my dad both felt a gust of wind and went right out the door. It went, passed right through us and went out the door. Whenever we came back in the house, whenever he was done, the heaviness that we felt was gone. It felt like the, the house was back. 
After we did the cleansing blessing, we did not believe John was in any more danger. We felt confident that we did get rid of that spirit or that demonic. To protect myself, they told me to say prayers, go to church, change anything negative in my life, go positive. I did mention to John that he may have other spirits show up just because of the land. You know, there was a cemetery here at one time. It's desecrated land. So, you know, once you remove that, they may be spirits still attached to that land. So he may start witnessing other things. I, I felt that, you know, it was gone. You can breathe again. It, it, you know, that heaviness was gone. It was lifted. 